Hello, everybody. This is Stores Nation, and I'm your host, Richard Prosser. Stores Nation is a show that talks about all things sports, from the NFL draft to NBA power rankings. I'm excited to bring the show back to stores for the first time. With me today, I have Noam Watt and Cole Stefan. How are you guys doing today? Incredibly busy, but I'm fine. Thank you very much for asking. Yeah, and I'm great. It is March. It is the best time of the year for college basketball. And if you know me, you know I live and love college basketball. So let's get into it. All right. Well, we have a bunch of different topics today. I can't wait to get going. But for me, the biggest story today is the QB carousel in the NFL. Matthew Stafford was traded for Jared Goff. Drew Brees might retire, four stud quarterbacks in the draft. And this is really season, the third season for the NFL. No, there are two quarterbacks that have asked out for a trade, Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson. As a Patriots fan, who would you rather they trade for? Yeah, as a Patriots fan, I'm passing on Russell Wilson quicker than he passed from the one-yard line into Malcolm Butler's arms for the Super Bowl. Russ, 32 years old already, he has passed his prime. He loves throwing two talented playmakers. You look at guys like Doug Baldwin, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. Those are guys the Patriots do not have. You bring Russell Wilson in, he's not going to be himself. On the other side, Deshaun Watson just now entering his prime. It's going to be his fifth season in the league. He is the future mold of quarterbacks in the NFL. This past season, 70% completion percentage, 33 touchdowns, only seven picks. He also ran for 440 yards and on nearly five yards per carry. This Deshaun Watson guy is a guy you can build your team around. He's going to bring in free agents. You can mold your offense to him, and you're going to go out and win championships with him, Bill Belichick, and Josh McDaniels putting their heads together. And Cole, what are your thoughts on these QBs asking out, and who would you rather have? You know, I find this to be quite interesting. We know that Russell Wilson is yet to officially ask out, but as you have mentioned before, this is easily going to be one of the most interesting quarterback moves this league has seen in decades. Like, people are going to be going places. Now, in terms of my preference, uh, as a GM of any team, really, let's just be neutral here, I try not to go for Watson, and the re- reason being is because the Texans are very intent on keeping him. If they weren't that intent like they are right now, then I would easily go for Watson because, as Noam said, he's young. He's in his prime fifth season, national championship winner. He has the experience to win in the playoffs, even though he hasn't really done it at the next level, this level. But at the same time, I have another quarterback I'd like to prefer here. I'd prefer, and I know he's like older than Russ, but I'm thinking Matt Ryan here. The Falcons have made it clear in some senses that they don't want to get, they don't want to have him in their plans for rebuilding. And they're highly, possibly, thinking of drafting a quarterback in the first round with their fourth overall pick. Why I like Matt Ryan, even though he's great and he's easily a franchise quarterback. He's consistent when passing the ball. He finished with over 4,000 yards this season. Numerous options Jedi can throw the ball to. Look at the Falcons. He's easily had Julio Jones. He's also worked with Roddy White and now Calvin Ridley. Great options. Now, for me personally, like if I'm for Watson, like I'd easily prefer where he has a bunch of playmakers and he can rebuild around the team. But since I'm sticking with Matt Ryan, I'm going to see him on the team, either the Panthers or Raiders. Although the Panthers would be a tough option because only because they're in their division. And I don't think the Falcons would be interested in trading in their division like many other teams. But if you were to go to the Raiders for Derek Carr, the reason being is because the Raiders have some solid offense. I mean, yes, they went eight and eight last year. Yes, their defense isn't great, but look at their offense. I mean, Darren Waller had an impressive season. Nelson Aguilar didn't drop things anymore. Henry Ruggs is very fast. And yeah, there's just a bunch of options out there that Matt Ryan or other quarterbacks really could throw to. Now, yes, Derek Carr could be a downgrade in Atlanta, but why do why care if he can be that guy who provides veteran experience for whoever the Falcons draft, not Trevor Lawrence, because he's probably going first overall. So that guy can become like the next man up. That's what I have to say about that. Well, I have to agree on a lot of points you said there. For me personally, as a Jets fan, I want Russell Wilson. He's a hall, future Hall of Fame quarterback, and I want to, I would love to see what him and Robert Sala could do. Moving forward, let's talk about the upcoming baseball season. The Dodgers are the favorite this year, plus 200 to win the World Series, according to William Hill Sportsbook. The Yankees are plus 650, along with the Padres. Cole, who are your World Series favorites for the preseason? You know, I was initially going to say the Padres, just because A, they haven't won a ring, and B, when they've gone, they've won just one play at World Series game in 1984. But then the Dodgers got Trevor Bauer for three years. And it's like, 
but just looking at the talent that the Dodgers have already, without Bauer, they have Bellinger. Well, I'm not going to list the ball just to save time, but like a strong rotation, a strong lineup, and a decent bullpen. The Dodgers are loaded. Their their cap space is loaded. Somehow they don't know what the luxury tax is. But the long story short is, I'm picking the Dodgers here. They just have so much talent that there's almost no way they don't go back and win another rig. But let me be clear about this. Although I'm picking the Dodgers here, that doesn't count out a certain couple things. The first being that the Dodgers and Padres will most likely meet in the NLCS or earlier. Most probably the NLCS, though. Why? These teams are probably the two best teams in baseball, and that's just coming from me personally. Like, they have the pitching, and they have the hitting, and it's going to be interesting to see them play each other 18 to 19 times this season. It's going to be great. And of course, I'm also not counting out a Yankees Dodgers, uh, Yankee, yes, Yankees Dodgers World Series because the Yankees have a decent amount of talent too. Now, other teams to look out for, even though I am picking Dodgers, will include like the Braves and Mets. But the long story short, it's got to be the Dodgers. So, who's your Tampa Bay Rays for this year? Who's your sleeper team for the World Series? Well, first, I gotta, I gotta just say, every year Yankees fans say this is their year, you know. Blah, 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 blah. And this year, they did nothing in the offseason. Just like, you know, they're going to bring back the same team that just lost to the Rays. And, yeah, the Padres got better. And that Dodgers-Padres 18, 19 games a year is going to be electric. Uh, there was a lot of a lot of bad blood between those two teams this past year. And that was with no fans in the stadium. So with some fans or more fans this coming season, you know, Fernando Tatis, Manny Machado against guys like Corey Seager, Mookie Betts, Cody Bellinger. That is going to be the stuff you want to watch in the NLCS. But my sleeper team comes from the AL East again. And no, it's not the Yankees. It's the Toronto Blue Jays. I love the George Springer edition, a UConn guy. And they have an absolutely mean trio in Vlad Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette, and Kevon Biggio. They also have solid pitching staff, Hinjin Ryu, and UConn alum Anthony Kay, who I really think is going to make a big step up in the majors this year. Look for that young trio to take a big step up. Vlad Guerrero, I think it's going to be a beast this year, possible dark horse MVP candidate. And I think the Blue Jays are going to go on a deep playoff run. Yeah, what I have to say is let's go Mets. I can't wait to see Jacob DeGrom pitch 30 plus, hit, 30 plus starts this year. And I can't wait to see how we do with our new addition of Francisco Lindor. Moving on to the NBA. Last year, I predicted on the show that the Utah Jazz would be the one seed. Looking back, I was wrong. But looking at them this year, the Utah Jazz are one of the best teams in the NBA with the best record in the NBA. And I think that my prediction still counts. Um, no, looking at this year, are the Jazz legit? Yes, that's the simple answer. Donovan Mitchell, Rudy, Rudy Gobert got over their beef. Rudy, Rudy Gobert has stopped coughing on microphones. Uh, Joe Ingles is a stud, and Mike Connolly has found himself again after years of being lost in irrelevancy. Now, do I think they'll win the West come playoff time? Absolutely hell no. There's a duo in Los Angeles, LeBron James and Anthony Davis. There's another duo in Los Angeles, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. No way in hell that the Jazz end up getting through both or either of those duos come playoff time. I got my money on one of the two teams from L.A. Sorry, Utah. And Cole, piggybacking on that, do you think that the Jazz could take down a uh, traditional powerhouse of the West, like the Clippers or the Lakers? You know, I could see it. I mean, yes, the Jazz are being – like Donovan Mitchell's their guy. I personally would love to see the Jazz win their first ring. And that's why I would want them to win because they obviously have not even though they've had the guys before. But the only conflict I would have is if the Jazz and Clippers, for example, would meet in a playoff series. Neither team has a title in a combined two finals tries. So to be fair, it'd be a great matchup. Long story short, Mitchell has been that guy. Like I said, and a strong piece, and one, and I would suggest, whenever the trade deadline is, I can't remember, one more strong piece to go along with Mitchell, Gobert, Ingles, and whatnot. This would give their, this is probably their best team since Stockton and Malone back in the 90s. But just adding that piece would make it like, probably a parallels better, like, They'll definitely be up there when we look back in history. Now, if the Jazz do end up winning this series, which I would love them to, again, if I would love to see a Jets and Jazz, a Utah Jazz, Brooklyn Nets finals matchup. And the reason being is because both of them would be going there for their first title. Now, until that happens, we don't know. We don't know into the future that much. 
But what I will predict is the Jazz go full bucks, kind of, sort of, and they just dominate the regular season. Well, like I said before, I love the Jazz with Conley and Mitchell, and I hope they could go on a run, especially with Mitchell being a Connecticut guy. I would love for him to go far. That is all for Sports Nation. I want to thank you both, Noam and Cole, for joining me today and talking professional sports. That's all from Source Nation, UCTV Sports.